Ernest Holmes says that life is the gift of God to you. And that all that life is and has is given fully to you to enjoy. The life of God is in the essence of everything. And life always awaits an opportunity of manifesting its fullness through you. God, he says, is always in the midst of you and you are always in the midst of God. And then he says, you are a choosing mind in divinity. And that divinity is shot through with, permeated with, the essence and the presence of the Almighty. And it's yours for the experiencing of it. It's yours for your acceptance of it. It's yours for your recognition of it. And to the degree that you can recognize, identify, allow and accept, to that degree can you experience the truth of these words. The truth of these words. It's all about understanding and realizing I'm not just my little self and neither is anybody else and neither is anything but that you and everybody else is shot through with the glory and power and the grandeur of God. What are you going to do with it? What are you doing with it? What are you going to do about it? How's your life just now moving along? I can tell you this, that if we were aware of all of these things that were shared in this chapter, our lives would be moving splendidly. Splendidly. And then, of course, he goes on to remind us of the great words of Jesus. Anything you are desirous of in prayer, believing, it shall be yours. And the significant words are in prayer, believing. You have to have a prayerful attitude and be convicted about what it is you're feeling, what it is you're thinking, what it is you are aware of. And the only thing any of us need to be aware of is the presence of God. Right where I am, God is. And where God is, all is well. That's all we need ever be aware of. Nothing else. We don't have to go into deep explanations with our source. We don't have to ask and spell out what we're asking for with our source. All we have to, to know is that God is where I am and where God is there can only be God and nothing less than that. Nothing else other than that. He also reminds us of the words of Jesus when Jesus said, I and the Father are one. I and the Father are one. And Jesus, whatever he did, said we could do too. Whatever he discovered, he said we could discover too. Whatever he experienced, he said we could experience too. It wasn't just for his experience only. I and the Father are one. Can you imagine who we'd be, what we'd be, if we truly, really believed I and the Father are one? I and the Father are one. That's an amazing, incredible statement. And you and I have the opportunity of allowing that to sink into our very bones this coming week. I and the Father are one. Philip, he who sees me sees the Father. And that was what enabled Jesus to do the great good things he did and to facilitate all the healings that he facilitated. Why is that? Well, because he was unified with the Father. He knew I and the Father are one. He experienced I and the Father are one. He felt I and the Father are one. And therefore, he saw individuals in the light of their truth, at the level of their spiritual being. So when somebody came to him for health, he only saw a healthy mind and a healthy body before him. 
he saw the spiritualized person before him and that is all he related to. He didn't see a body in discomfort or disease. He just saw, as God sees, wholeness and completeness. And because the person was open and receptive to that, they were healed. A great wonderful example to us with regard to how we go about helping ourselves and helping others. But we have to get there, but we're back into the old dilemma again. Why is it we're not there? Why is it we're not there yet? Same old dilemma. You cannot have faith, trust and confidence and belief in what you do not know. And if we are not in a deep, close relationship with our source, we cannot have the kind of faith and trust and belief in that source. Because we haven't built the relationship with our source. We haven't engaged in time and energy to build that relationship with our source. And it requires time and energy, like any relationship does, but most particularly this one, the relationship we have with our source. We have to do as all of the saints and sages did and court the presence of God. See, God's presence is always courting us. The problem is we don't return the courting. And we are inclined very much to court the presence. But now courting the presence of God is not courting the presence out there, up there, over there, somewhere, some nebulous presence. Courting the presence of God is to court the presence of God in everything and everyone, especially ourselves and everything around and about us. That's how you court the presence. That's how you experience omnipresence, the omnipresence of spirit, by seeing spirit everywhere, in everything and in everyone, and only seeing that, and nothing less than that. And that's not what we do, is it? But that's what we're called to do, that's what we're given to do, now, if you and I experience any sense of withholding, that withholding is happening, but not on the part of the divine. Withholding is a human construct. We withhold very well. We're expert at it. But there's nothing for God to withhold because, as Ernest Holmes remind us, everything has been given to us fully to enjoy in life, all of the good, nothing withheld. We're the ones that do the withholding. And we withhold by not having the absolute faith and trust and belief in the Divine Presence, in Omnipresence, in the Father and I are one. He who sees me sees the Father. He who sees you sees the Father. That's how we withhold, through lack of faith and lack of belief and lack of conviction. We withhold through lack of surrender to the source of our being in trust that everything is taken care of when I move my feet and do my part and become part of the co-creation of the good that wants to flow through my life. The power is present. Ernest Holmes reminds us too in chapter 14 that the happiness and the power and the goodness of God is at the center core of our being right now. Right now. And there's nothing for us to do to get that except to recognize it being there, identify with it being there, and then allow it to flow through us in beautiful expression. Now we do realize and we do know that all our life's experiences are produced by the thinking we think and the feelings we feel. 
and anything that I am thinking and feeling over and over and over again is accepted by the subconscious mind and is brought to life in our experience, whatever that is, whether it's on the negative side of life or on the affirmative side of life. Everything we think, everything we feel over and over and over again with deep conviction, the subconscious mind accepts, moves upon it, and allows it to come to life in our experience. That's an awesome thing to know. It's even more awesome to apply it and move upon it and let it be that which uplifts and expands our lives. All that the Father has is mine. He who sees me sees the Father. It is the Father's great delight, the pleasure, to give to me all of the kingdom. There is no withholding in God. None whatsoever. All good is available to you and it's available to you now. But surrender is required. Surrender of mitering ourselves by thinking and trying to figure this out and figure that out and figure the next thing out. All you and I have to do is know what you want of good. Know what that good is. Is it whatever? Is it health of mind, health of uh, uh, emotion, health of uh, spirituality, health of finances, whatever it is. I have to know what I want. But I have to want it because it's good for me and it's good for others. I have to know that with my increase, I have more to give and more to share because as Ernest Holmes reminds us, the nature, the essence of God is love and givingness. And if the essence and nature of God is love and givingness, it's your nature too because in the image and in the likeness you are created. So if you and I are not loving and giving, then we are bound to be unhappy. We are bound to be disturbed. We are bound to be upset. We are bound to suffer this, that, and the next thing because we are living against our nature, which which is to be love and givingness. Now we hear it over and over again that we're here. We show up here as a blessing, to be the blessing and to bless. And to bless is to give and to share and to care. And to be in service, in service, in service. Not servitude, but in service to each other whenever that opportunity arises. That's how we court the presence. We show up as the blessing, aware that we are a blessing, to be wherever we are that blessing, and to be of service. And because that's our nature, when we're not doing that, being that, we're upset in some way or another. It naturally follows. When you live against your own true nature, you cannot be happy. You cannot feel satisfied. You cannot feel whole and you cannot feel complete. You cannot live just for yourself or a few people around you. The ones you like, the ones you love. It doesn't work that way. Life is lived in the moment, and when a need crosses our path, if we can fill it, that's the expectation, because that is our ability. We can do that. This week, I would like us all to take for our mantra, God and I are one. Say it with me. God and I are one. Say it again. God and I are one, and again. God and I are one. I want us to take that for our mantra this week. I want us to, throughout our day and throughout our night, 
when we are awake and aware and we have that conscious moment, be with God and I are one. God and I, and say it over and over and over again until you begin to feel it. And when you begin to feel it, it will say itself in and through and by means of you. And your life this week will be amazing. Absolutely amazing. Be open first and foremostly to knowing and experiencing and feeling that God and I are one. God and I are one. So that whenever a little cloud starts to move in your direction, a cloud of trouble or challenge or whatever, go into God and I are one. And I assure you that if you do that with gusto, that little cloud will soon dissipate itself and that challenge will be a thing of the past. God and I are one. You think it, you breathe it, you drink it, you eat it, you're present to it all of the time courting the presence in this way. And that's how we do it. That's how we do it. We put our whole minds, our whole hearts, our whole souls into knowing something, into figuring something out, into that seeker within us that wants to keep going and going and going until we return back to the truth of our own being. And the seeker is always there until we get back to where we once belonged. We get back home to ourselves and we self-realize. And self-realization is a gift for each and every one of us without exception, not just for the few. It's for everyone. Self-realization, God-realization. The goodness of God is all around us and all about us for those of us who have eyes to see and those who are focused on that. So this week again, I would like us all to focus on living in the expectancy of good and only the expectancy of good along with our mantra. And living with that sense that life is on our side, that the universe supports us, that God is not just with us but in us, moving through us at all times. And to live this week knowing that good is the only thing I desire for myself and all others besides. So that my thoughts are on the good, my feelings are on the good, my actions are with the good. So that good, 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 good is all that's on my mind. God is good. And everything God created was good and very good. That's you. So our good selves we need to be in company with this week. Our good selves, our best selves. The self of us that knows exactly, perfectly, how to receive what has been given so lavishly. You and I have before us the opulent generosity of our Creator. The opulent generosity of our Creator. There's no need for any of us to live in lack of any kind. Remember, there is nothing good nor bad, but thinking makes it so. And when you and I get to that state, our fears dissipate, our doubts go away, our discomfort removes itself from us, and we are not troubled or moved by changing time, passing time. We are not troubled or moved by changing circumstances or experiences. We are not troubled or moved by all the movement around us. Because we know, we know the presence of God is right where we are. And where the presence of God is, all is good. And we know, we know without doubt, that it all works out in the end. And that good comes out of everything. When we know it all works out in the end. When we know that good comes out of everything. So it is given to you to have a good life. A thriving life. And don't judge a good life and a thriving life on what you might be experiencing. There may be a challenge in your life of some kind, but that doesn't mean that you're not getting it right. 
or that you did something wrong. Not at all. It just means there's a challenge in your life. And that if you stay in the awareness of God and I are one, it'll all work out in the end. And good will come out of it. And in the midst of the challenge, stay with the identification of yourself as the spiritual being and not the discomforted one. Not the ailing one. But stay with the recognition of yourself as that beauty and grace and wholeness and completeness that the Creator sees you as and you can see yourself as too. That's how everything turns out all right. And good comes out of everything. And don't wait for challenges to come because we're a little bit more challenged in that way then. Start now when everything is okay and then it's so much easier if a challenge arises. Start now knowing and feeling and raising and praising life on this plane because it's all good, it's all God, no matter what the appearances are. Very muy difficile, very difficult. Because our situations, our signs and our symptoms and our circumstances pull us into the grip of doubt, the grip of anxiety, the grip of fear, because we've been so practiced in that for so long. But now when we practice the presence of spirit, we know this has no power over me. This has no power over me. Because right where I am, God is, and where God is, there is only God and nothing else. This, whatever it is, has no power over me. And I will not give it any power through the way I'm thinking, through the way I'm feeling. I will not go into fear. I will not go into doubt. I will not go into anxiety. I will stay rooted and grounded in that infinite awareness that all that the Father has is mine. All that the Father has is mine. Of well-being, of fullness, of plenty, of creative expression. All that the Father has is mine, and it's mine now. I will not be perturbed, I will not be disturbed, and I will not move off this premise. And remember, life is living its eternal self by means of you. Life is living its eternal self by means of you. You're not going anywhere, my dear. You're continuing and continuing and continuing and continuing and ever expanding in the awareness of how great and how good you are. That's how spiritual evolution works. Life is always advancing, always going forward. There's always an upgrade, no matter what the appearances seem to be. Alas, we judge ourselves according to our human goals and ideals and our human ideology. And we compare and we contrast and we judge and we do all of that. And it's keeping us bound, bound, bound. It stops us from soaring and it stops us from flying and it stops us from being all that we are already, but not in practice. And it's all about practice, practice, practice. So rejoice and be glad, my dear ones, and give blessing every day, bless every day, give thanksgiving every day for the good that is and the good that will remain and the good that always will be by means of you. Whatever that is that you are endeavoring to realize, you can, it is possible, just get into the Christed conscious awareness of something greater than yourself present to you, available to you, that is a very real and present help. Our God, the scripture says, is a very real and present help. So, no need to feel helpless, no need to feel hopeless, 
No need to feel lack of any kind, isolation of any kind. Go to the source, go within. Know that that divine heart is burning with love for each one and all of its creation. And that your heart is inflamed with this power and this presence and this energy. Go to the heart of it. Go to the heart of it. Be warmed by the light of it. Be healed by the power of it. Be uplifted by the certainty of it. Because you can. So again, my dear ones, I'm inviting us all this week to enter into the mantra, not say it, enter into the mantra, God and I are one. Go about the business of our days and nights with the expectancy of good and only good. Have good flowing from our lips. Have good feeling itself in our hearts. Have good in all that we do in everything we participate and give thanks because then how can we not how can we not experience well-being how can we not live well how can we not prosper and expand you can i can the question is Will we put in the time? Will we put in the energy in order to realize the presence that is more than we are right where we are? Because if we do, it is done unto us as we believe, and so it is. We invite you to experience Dr. Moira in person on Sundays. Our services are at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. and child care is available. Please join us. If you enjoy these messages and would like to make a donation to our center, please visit our website at redondocsl.org. Thank you for your support of this ministry.